The Queen of Spades has been on our wish list for a very long time to bring to Des Moines Metro Opera. Tchaikovsky is a well-known name to music lovers, uh, better known perhaps for his symphonies and ballets, things like Swan Lake and The Nutcracker, but he wrote a number of operas. When The Queen of Spades was first performed, he called it, if I'm not mistaken, my greatest triumph. Alexander Pushkin wrote the original story. Pushkin is really the national literary hero of Russia. For Tchaikovsky to take that brooding story and meld it with both Russian music and music with Western European influences creates a really remarkable experience. Queen of Spades is a story about obsessions. It's about an obsessive love and it's about an obsession with the mystery of three cards. Queen of Spades is a massive score in terms of stamina for everyone. The main roles are quite long. The orchestra is always working very hard. Each act is almost an hour long. Conducting it coming out of a pandemic has been a joy for all of us, but it has also been a bit of a kind of getting back into shape. It's our first season back from being dark during the COVID-19 pandemic, so it's extra specially joyous. Uh, it's also full of extra special challenges. Taking on that role of, of being one of the first theatrical and musical performing arts organizations to return to live, indoor, in-person performances comes with a lot of responsibility to do so successfully and, and to do it safely as well. So this production is entirely new from the ground up. The scenery, the costumes, the props created, designed, built, and brought in to form a, a very cohesive visual whole that met with the vision of the creative team. We decided to set it in the late 18th century in St. Petersburg, Russia. All of the costumes are period, highly detailed. Many of the clothes were built in Europe. The era of Catherine the Great is often known as the golden age of Russia. Catherine the Great makes an appearance at the end of the ballroom scene in act two. When I am thinking about Tchaikovsky's Queen of Spades, I'm constantly struck with how fiendishly difficult it is to produce, to dig into. It's a piece that's so rarely performed. For this production, we have an astounding cast. They are incredible singers. They are incredible actors. Joyce Castle is one of the foremost mezzos, an artist at the just the peak of her artistry and it's a role she's been wanting to do and you can, you can feel it and it creates sort of a crackling energy within the environment throughout the show. 51 years in the profession, the first time to do this. Well, if you get a role like this one or like so many I've had, it's just a gift. It's a real journey and there's a lot of fantasy in the journey. So there is that spooky part of it. Absolutely. There's a booga booga part of it, but that's fun. Sarah Gartland and Jonathan Burton, it's a fabulous dynamic between the two of them. These roles are extremely difficult. The two of them, because they are so skilled, they're like living and breathing these characters. It is by far the hardest I've had to work to memorize a role. This took about three times the amount of time the amount of effort, uh, not to mention even things like the complexity of the story where you're sitting around trying to even understand what's happening to your character. One of the things that's underestimated throughout someone's operatic career is the emotional toll that you experience while you're on stage. This role exhausts me in a way that I've, I've never experienced. This is the biggest production I've ever been a part of here. From the set, the costumes, this music, this orchestra, the language, and it's in the most intimate space. So the payoff for the audience member is just going to be huge, I think. Oh, he, 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 